Welcome to Modern Entrepreneur. Today we have Christy Mims, who is a professional and certified coach who built her coaching business, The Revolutionary Club, into a Forbes Top 100 for careers. After serving over a thousand clients, she got a ton of questions on how she did it and Coach Pony was born. So, she says, if you want a real and honest, no holds barred look at being a life coach, complete with wine and chocolate, then this is community for you. Thank you so much for being here and making me read your promotion. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, well done. Okay. Um, so uh, talk to me about uh, Coach Pony. That's your primary thing right now? Well, my business is split, but right now Coach Pony is the primary thing because we're in a launch. Okay, so tell me about that. So one of the things about being a life coach is that it attracts people who love to help. Yeah. And they just want to help and they just want to do good in the world. Yeah. And they're often not very skilled in the business side of things. Uh -huh. And so um, when I became a life coach and, and really got into it, I just discovered I loved online marketing, I love the business, I love everything else. Mm -hmm. And one of the sadnesses that I have is so many life coaches fail because they just aren't willing to do the business side or they don't know how. Mm -hmm. And so um, Coach Pony is about giving them the skills that they need and um, the community that they need mm -hmm. to learn basic business skills in terms of coaching specifically. It's like a, a, an online course or a live course or what is this thing? So we got a couple of things. We obviously have a big free community with uh -huh. what you'd expect, a lot of website resources, a lot of free guides, free videos, mm -hmm. Facebook group, all the usual bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. And then we have a program called Build a Real Business. Uh -huh. Um, to which is a structured 10 week program to really help coaches kind of take that next level in terms of their going to getting their MBA in business in terms for coaches. Yeah. And then I have a book as well um, called Money Paths uh, Six Real Ways to Make Money as a Life Coach. Awesome. And so you've been doing this for quite some time now. I've been a full time coach for over six years. Uh huh. And, and Coach Pony is um, a newer endeavor. Yes, we've been doing it for about uh, two years now, uh -huh. roughly, yeah. And was was uh, being a life coach your first sort of entrepreneurial venture? Yes. Well, no. My first entrepreneurial venture was a blog that I started with a friend of mine called uh -huh. City Girls, um, how to uh, have fun in the cities of D.C. and Philadelphia as a uh -huh. single as a single lady. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. It was basically an epic failure, yeah. except um, I got a lot of free makeup out of it, okay. so that that worked out for me. Total win. <laughs> um, so if you could like now having you know had some success in this entrepreneurial endeavor, um, go back and tell your uh, startup self how to make it easier. What would you say? Well, I was a consultant for a long time, and so we did a lot of risk management. And so the thing I would say to my younger self is like, oh my God, you're gonna fail. So just get out there and fail faster. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I think I think that's it. So that's something that actually we talk about at Entreport quite a lot. Um, we encourage people to get comfortable with, with failure and we demonstrate it all the time. And yet, sometimes uh, failures really are failure. And it's hard to know um, when we're kind of like, it, you know, in, on Wall Street we say you don't want to throw good money after bad, right? It's hard to know when you're, you're continuing to invest in something that's just a sinkhole. Um, and yet at the same time, you don't want to stop uh, investing in something that is just going through, you know, what Seth Godin calls the dip. Yeah. Um, so how do you figure you, um, you tell the difference between perseverance, wise perseverance and, um, and like s stubborn idiocy? Well, for me, I think a couple things. One is, do I still have like a passionate interest in doing this thing? Yeah. And when I call up a couple people who I know need it, are they still interested in doing it as well? Mm -hmm. So I always try to go back to both first myself to be like, oh my God, can I still do this? And then second to my customer base yeah. and, and just ask them like, hey, what's going on? You know, would you buy this? Why aren't, haven't you bought this? What's, what's happening? Uh -huh. To make sure that there's still a reason to be doing it. And I think there's a period where you just have to keep doing it and suffer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. until it becomes clear. And how long of, uh, was that period for you? Depends on the product. Mm. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so some products have done really well and it's been great. Uh -huh. And then some have been just a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. And so um, it just, it honestly depends on the product. Yeah. And a lot of times I think even when the thing that decides it for me is even when I go back to my customers and I'm like, why aren't you buying this? Um, is that I just don't, I don't have any interest in selling it anymore. Mm -hmm. I just realize my passion isn't there. And if my passion's not there, I'm just not going to be able to, to get through the dip. To get behind it. Yeah, interesting. That's uh, good self-awareness. So um, what do you feel like your unique skill set is? I think my unique skill set is I take difficult things and make them a little bit easier to understand and yeah. break them apart. Uh-huh. So breaking complex things into, into simple, 
Um, actionable steps. Simple actionable steps. Yes, I think one of my uh, one of the big things I always focus on, and I think mm -hmm. comes easily to me and not so easily to others, is to take action. And mm -hmm. so, being able to break apart a difficult thing like how to start a coaching business mm -hmm. into simple actionable steps is one of my strengths for sure. Mm -hmm. Where do you think people get stuck mostly? A lot of times, people get stuck in two areas. One is they get stuck in all the admin and bureaucracy that goes with setting up a business, mm -hmm. and that they just never make it past like, do I incorporate? You know, oh what's God. what's up with my state law? Um, and the other is who do I serve? Because coaches, in particular, coaches are terrible about wanting to help everyone with everything all the time, always. Yeah. And so therefore, they say, you know, I help people with transformation. I'm like, people is everyone. Transformation is everything. Like, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a lot of traction with that. Yeah. So they have a hard time narrowing the focus to really be amazing at one thing. Yeah. So that people, so that it resonates with somebody. Yeah. So that it's sticky to their audience, but also so that they have credibility and mastery. Yeah. You know, it's if, if I was to say to you, Hey, um, you're struggling with your career right now. Mm -hmm. And you said, no, no, maybe. And then I said, all right, well, are Killing you, it. are you looking for maybe some romance? Cause I could also help you with that. Uh huh. Yeah. It, 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 how, wait a minute. Like how sketchy do I sound? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I totally hear you. So, uh, helping people get focused and, uh, over just some of the basic hurdles yeah. is, uh, is a lot of it. Yeah. I think when people get the right building box in place, then it's just kind of understanding what you, what you do well at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not rocket science. What we do is not rocket science. Right. There's only a certain amount of ways to do it, especially in the coaching industry. Mm -hmm. But once, so once you get the basics, then you can start to really get creative. But if you don't get the basics, you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah, totally hear you. So um, you obviously are uh, like like all of us, an entrepreneur that has to go get customers um, and convince them to purchase your thing. Um, what's working for you now to make that happen? <laughs> um, I was laughing because I'm in a launch, and so like everything is blowing up. Uh -huh. You know, like four websites have been down oh, and, no. you know, like lead pages went down and something else went down. And we're like, oh my gosh. Um, but the thing that's been working with me, I think, is um, honesty and humor. Mm -hmm. That's what I try to do. I think and uh, a lot of people have a lot of feelings about life coaches. Mm -hmm. Like, mm, what is this? Yeah. This feels like culty. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have feelings about life coaches get learning business skills. Like, is this a multi-level, you know, sort of product launch thing? Is uh -huh. this how, how shady is this organization? Yeah. And so I think just shedding light on what it's really like to be a life coach, what it's really like to build a business. You know, it's not always pretty. Let's uh -huh. talk about that. So I've been trying to bring a lot of brutal honesty and humor into what I do every day mm -hmm. and into the blogs and the marketing content that I share into my Facebook ads, everything that we're doing to try to not only set myself apart, but build up the, um, you know, the rapport with my customers. So they know that they can trust me to tell the truth. Yeah. In terms of like actual tactics, you said um, content and I heard you say Facebook. Um, so is that like kind of the, the one, two punch of your situation is, is like Facebook ads to content in this moment? Yes. We're doing a lot of Facebook ads because we're gearing up for another program launch. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a huge piece of it. Mm -hmm. But in the longer term, um, I rely on partnership mm. for the most part, building partnerships with coaching schools that teach certification uh -huh. and, um, building my network that way. Uh -huh. Um, and so that's going to be uh, how we have gotten students in the past and how we continue to get students moving forwards outside of the traditional marketing methods yeah. like Facebook or Google or all that other stuff. Well, partnership is actually a traditional marketing method um, and, and super smart. So, um, so you're going to um, the, the place where students are like coming out newly certified to be life coaches and then going like, what well, now, what the hell do I do? And, and you've built a relationship with those schools that, um, so they're like referring you business. Yes. I'm and, slowly building relationships with a bunch of different life school, life coaching schools. It's taking time, but that's exactly right. That's yeah, exactly the process. It does take time because you're not the first person to think of this. Nope. Uh, no doubt. Um, <laughs> and how have you thought through the process of getting them to refer you instead of the like hundred people that have asked them to do this before? Uh, okay. Well, a couple things. So one, I'm going to schools, um, that I have students who have graduated from my program. So who oh, right. So you have internal referrals. Yes. Uh -huh. Strategic. Yes. Yes. So how, and, and we've got success stories. Right. Um, and the other is I've been just reaching out and building general relationships with schools, attending some of their programs and conferences, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing a charm offensive, trying to help them out wherever I can, mm -hmm. um, to start to build those relationships. Yeah. Um, but those are the two primary methods. Yeah. Smart. So, um, Tell me what is your like cutting edge in terms of what you're learning right now? What is going to be the most useful thing for you to kind of, um, you know, next level for you to get to? 
the non-cutting edge one is still going back to the sort of essentialism theory. Like, I feel like I have to reread that book every three months. Oh, really? I haven't <laughs> read that book once. Oh, it's so good. Uh -huh. It's so good. Yeah, just to continue to stay focused on what's really working and do one thing and do it amazingly well, do it better than anyone else in the world. So uh -huh. that's what I want the Coach Pony community to be, the best in the world for business. Yeah. Um, and the other is scale. So the thing that I'm excited about learning about is, um, you know, as we reach a certain tipping point, um, I have to, I scaled up the career side of my business mm -hmm. in a different way than I'm going to scale up the coach pony side of my business. So figuring out what the scale looks like, how to scale um, uh, in the most uh, supportive way possible to our students and to our community. Mm -hmm. so. And what are the challenges with scale that you're um, like seeing on coming? <sighs> Some of the challenges, first and foremost. <laughs> well, can you just repeat that size? <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about this one a lot. Um, finding the right people uh -huh. to help me scale, yeah. finding the right team members um, to help me tackle that and to take mm -hmm. care of my customers. And the, I have an internal team, I have freelancers as well, and people on retainer, but training everyone in exactly the right pattern of thinking so we're consistent always. Yeah. And putting the right people in the right role, I think, is the first. And mm -hmm. then scale in terms of um, lead generation and mm -hmm. really building beyond what we've been able to do so far mm -hmm. um, and trying to get to another level of visibility and credibility. Yeah. So I'm working on both those things. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. I mean, those are the challenges, right? We yeah. get to a certain point in it and um, it stops be being about the product and it starts being about the team, right? And, and figuring out how to um, you know, manage, uh, you know, more cooks in the kitchen and, uh, you know, bring them on and inspire them to do their best work. And uh, it's, it's all unique challenges that oftentimes we didn't even see coming. Yeah, getting the right people in the right role. Yeah. And knowing what the right role was in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's something I'm definitely... Super challenging. Yeah, thinking a lot about. Yeah. Good luck with that. Um. <laughs> Can you notice? No. Uh, um. <clears throat> So, uh, man, you've been at this for a little while. Um, you obviously have you know years to go in your career yet. But um, but when you think about you know what what is it all for? What, what do you imagine you'd like your legacy to be about? My legacy is I helped people find work that they love. Mm -hmm. And and that's it. Because I think the world's a different place when we like our jobs. Because if I can help one life coach be successful and they have even at minimum over the course of a year twenty or thirty clients, mm -hmm. right? That's like that. That's amazing. They've changed twenty or thirty lives, and mm -hmm. I've been able to help them do that just by kind of being in the right place at the right time in their journey. So it's just I think, um, you know, whatever you think about coaching or life coaching, there is a huge amount of uh, positivity around it in terms of what can happen when people reach their goals and get a little bit more focused on stuff. So putting more well-trained, successful life coaches in the world, I think would make a huge difference. You know, we are living and building these businesses in a, in a pretty unique moment where, um, you know, change is, you know, literally happening, you know, at a exponentially faster rate every single year. Um, what do you think it means to be an entrepreneur in this modern moment? I think it means two things. I think it means freedom. Um, which is the first thing, and I think it means um, ultimate creativity as mm. the second thing. Because unlike the days of yore, you don't have to have a lot of capital to get going. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a, a space to go to. Mm -hmm. You can start with literally nothing, mm -hmm. just an idea and an internet connection yeah. and create. And you don't even need a lot of clients today, I think, to be a modern entrepreneur. You just need the right clients, mm -hmm. and with the targeting and the capabilities that we have, you can find them in a way you never could before. Yeah. And so I think there's so much freedom in that for people to kind of be able to leave the traditional workforce and do what they want. And then the creativity, like just in what I get to do, the things that I can create, the programs, the book, the, just the retreats, whatever I want to do, I can create it. And I think that's amazing. The kind of creativity I did not have as a consultant, creating a lot of PowerPoints, yeah. working for the man. Um, and so it's pretty fabulous. And I think, I mean, just that's just my industry, but there's, you know, just being here in San Francisco, everyone's doing something awesome. Mm -hmm. And there's so much creativity, and I think the sky's the limit on it. And I'm not sure that was something that was always the case. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate having you here. You're welcome. Would you uh, do us the favor of signing our wall? Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs>